Beloved, grace and peace from God our Father be multiplied unto you. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and of earth. This morning as I ended my quiet time, I, I just spent some time just um, trying to hear the heart of God, which I think is important every so often. And I, I had this thought, this inspiration that, um, that we should do some devotionals um, during this kingdom tide season ordinary times as it's called as you know this is the season of growth and change and transformation and so i i just thought i would do that and so probably that's what we'll do for the next couple of weeks and so um uh, i hope that you will be blessed by these um so i was reading um from first peter um as i go through this season i focus a lot on the epistles um, um uh, and um and so I've been in the book of First Peter, and so I'll read a few verses for us from First Peter chapter um, chapter one, and I'll read um, particularly um, verse fourteen, maybe maybe verse thirteen. Um, from verse 13, so prepare your minds for action and exercise self-control. Put all your hope in the gracious salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. So you must live as God's obedient children. Don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. You didn't know any better then. But now you must be holy in everything you do, just as God who chose you is holy. For the scripture says, I'm reading verse 16, for the scripture says you must be holy because I am holy. Um, and and I, I think I particularly like, uh, there, there's just so much, there's so much to talk about. But so you must live as God's obedient children. Don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. One version, I believe, says, um, do not uh, conform um, to, the, to the formal lusts. Um, um, and... Uh, but the challenge, whichever version you use, the challenge in this passage is is be like the one, the holy one who has called you um, to be like him. Um, as we as we embark in this season of kingdom tide, the season of change, I want you to consider: is there something? And I think this is true for all of us. What is it in your life that needs to change? What is it in your life that needs to change? And, and you may have done this and you may know it, but maybe make a note of it. What is in your life that needs to change? Are there areas in your life that's simply just not working? You know, things in your life that's just not working. Are there areas in your life that's not working? Your money, your career, your finances, your health. Um, and, and if you have, once you've identified those areas, are, are, are you willing to say, Lord, I want you to be glorified in my life i want you to be exalted in my life lord i are you willing to say lord i've had enough of my own way i, I want to live like you i want to live um um life the way you intend for me to live life and 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 i i believe once you have um done that and, and be very specific. Now that you have said, I want change in my life. I want better. I have had enough of doing it my own way. I want you now to ask God to identify the areas in your life where you are sinful. Ask God to, he might, he might give you a word. He might send it through a sermon. He might use somebody or you might already know it. Ask God um, to identify, to show you the areas in your life where you are sinful, where you are self-centered, where you are 
struggling rather than living a Christ-centered and victorious life. And beloved, even as we journey through the seasons of the church, from Christ coming at Christmas, um, um, his promise of coming at Advent, his actual coming at Christmas, then, then the Lenten season as we, we contemplate the, the, the mystery of, of, the, of Easter and then we celebrate the joy of Easter and all of that, we are still, we are expected to live victorious. And that's a struggle for some. And so in this season now, I, I, I want that there be true fruit as we have gone through the season of, of Pentecost. I want that there be true fruit of the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And, and as you consider that, those questions, asking God to show you those things, um, I want that whatever the Lord brings to mind, acknowledge it. Admit that God, you are right. And I want you to make a decision to turn. I want you to make a decision to turn. God will show you how to turn as you spend time with him, as you read the scripture. Your responsibility is to make that decision to turn. When you make that decision to turn, God will show you how to turn. When, when, when you're going the wrong way, you'll feel the prompting of the Holy Spirit. God, and, and it's very important in this season, this is kingdom tight season, that you get into a consistent Bible reading pattern. Because as you do that, God shows you principles from his word that you can now apply to your life. Some of those principles may not make sense, but you got to be obedient. you got to trust him and God will bless your obedience. Anything we want from God comes through obedience. It is really obedience that God blesses. Faith, when we walk by faith, we, we walk in obedience and God blesses um, that obedience. And so... I realize that this won't necessarily be easy. Um, but as you go through this next week, as you go through this next month, the rest of this year, as we as we say, Lord, I want genuine change. Um, when it comes to when a situation arises at work, at home, it, with health issues, with your finances, with relationships, I, I want you to ask this question, Lord, what would you have me to do? Here's what I've come to realize. If you think of a parent, a parent anticipates the needs of their children. So that when the children says, I'm hungry, the parent says, oh, there is some food in the fridge. Here's what I've prepared. God is a parent. He's a million times better than our earthly parents. So he knows what we need. and But he, he still tells us to pray. Why? Because prayer is what builds that intimacy. And so as you go through the challenges, as you, if you're going to have change, when situation arises, you have to learn to ask yourself this question. Lord, what would you have me to do? So these things that you would have identified, Lord, what would you have me to do about them? I want to obey you. Beloved, if you follow these very simple principles, identifying, Lord, show me the areas where, 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 where I'm sinful. Show me the areas where I am I'm not Christ-centered. Um, uh, uh, show me the areas um, where, where I'm self-centered. Show me the areas where I'm struggling and then ask the Lord, what would you have me to do? And be obedient. Not only will you experience change and growth and transformation, but it would you, you would find yourself having a wonderful, enjoyable, deep, profound, almost indescribable intimacy between you and the Savior. And, and you would find that in this season, I encourage you, spend time reading the word, spend time praying, because just like a parent anticipates the needs that the children would have, God knows what you need, but he allows you, to, he says you got to pray for it because prayer encourages intimacy. And that's what God is interested in, being intimate with us, having a profound, uh, an indescribable and enjoyable relationship with us. So I hope that this, 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 just this little talk has encouraged you. Um, please let me know if it has. But, but I, want, I want to challenge you again with the scripture. Um, so you must live as God's obedient children. Don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. But now you must be holy in everything you do, just as God who chose you is holy. And I, I, verse 13 says, prepare your minds for action and exercise self-control. I love this. Put all your hope in the gracious salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. And until the revelation of Jesus Christ to the world, the Lord calls us to live a life of change and growth and transformation. 
And so this is my challenge to you as we begin this devotional series. This is my challenge. Lord, I want change. I I, I don't want to live life my own way. I've had enough of doing it my own way. I want to live by your rules. I want to live in obedience to you and to ask the Lord to show you the areas that he wants to work in. This is important. Don't go working in all of the areas. What area does the Lord want you to work on in this season? And then once you've identified them consistently, daily, maybe many times a day, pray, Lord Jesus, what would you have me to do? I want to obey you. What would you have me to do? And when you obey him based on what he tells you to do, your life will be transformed. Your life will be changed. There will be growth. And you would find that not only would there be transformation, change, and growth, but you would experience a wonderful, profound, and indescribable intimacy with God. So let's pray. Father, we come in the name of the Lord Jesus. And we pray this prayer together. Reveal to each of us anything, any area in our life, that displeases you. Show us the way to change. Show us the way you want us to go. We purpose, we commit to be obedient. Teach us, Lord, to spend time in your word, spend time in prayer, to spend time in your presence so that we can experience transformation in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. So, beloved, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. I pray that you would have a wonderful rest of the day, of the night, and uh, we'll continue to do, his, to do these devotionals. I hope that you were blessed by it. So, take good care. Bye-bye.